thought about trying several times and then every time I consider it, it's like, uh, try the case. Oh my God, there's a fly in this house. Hold on. Uh, it's flying away. God damn it. I thought I, I thought I got rid of all of them. Hello, welcome back to Vintage Story and the day after my fly infestation. This was a, I mean, kind of difficult session to record because I really was being inundated and dive bombed from several flies. Sorry if you hate flies, but I do too. But anyway, I'm, I'm sure someone will be entertained by that. This was actually a really uh, productive session. I got a lot of things done and a lot of boxes checked and um, a lot of new resources were gained. By the way, thank you to the comments. I really appreciate it. Um, someone's letting me know that hey, there's a, there's, I'm actually sitting on top of iron, uh, which is really good to know on one of my marks. So I'll definitely be coming back there. But in the meantime, I uh, made the mistake of seeing sphalerite in this zone and thought, oh my god, that's tin, and it says it's very good, but of course sphalerite is not, not tin, it's zinc. But um, nonetheless, getting zinc was also useful. I mean, it's basically as val valuable as tin at this point. So um, that was a good good find nonetheless, and I do go back there eventually. Um, we I cracked open my bloomery and got my glass, and we have 12 blocks of glass. I'm kind of um, undecided as to how I want to divvy that up, but uh, I, I'm like kind of half and half as to whether or not I want to semi-exploit the game. Basically, you only need one block of glass for a 7x7 seven seven zone to be considered a greenhouse, but I'm not sure if I want to exploit things that badly, so I might uh, use three by three that would mean I would use up the majority of that glass but I have um, a bit more black coal and I've got tons of quartz so um, I could do like two or three more bloomeries and have enough glass for at least four greenhouses which would definitely get the ball going. I decided to um, commit to what I was talking about in the last episode and redesign basically my some of my uh, smithing area and I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. This was a sort of long process of like, what you know, what do I want to do? I want a stone table, basically, as opposed to the wooden tables that are built into the game. The chisel provides you with a lot of uh, flexibility and custom, uh, customization power. And I took full advantage of that in designing this stone corner table. I really, really like how they came out. And uh, I think you'll agree they look a lot better than the, the rows of wooden tables. Um, I know that wooden tables would have worked too, but I think that having these long ones made a lot more sense. This year, by the way, instead of like putting a, another leg uh, at the corner there, I decided to just kind of have a bracket, which I think looks all right. But I don't know. You let me know in the comments. It'd be, you know, you, you're part of this process as well. The comments have actually been like seriously helpful and uh, have guided me here and there throughout the series. I, I don't think I would have been, uh, I would be as, as far as I am without some of the helpful commenters. But anyway, um, you can see like I, I, you know, try, I give these tables a little bit of a skirt, not, not too much. I guess the skirt is the opposite of what I give it. I give it more like an inline. Um, someone's going to tell me what, what I mean by that, but you know, you know what I mean, so to, never mind. I'm not correcting it, but uh, yeah, these these tables they turned out really well, and I really appreciate it. And I really enjoy the process of um, crafting, like with the chisel and trying to like mix form and function together to um, make something that functions in game, but also looks like it would function in some kind of rooted reality. It uh, it's a really fun thing and it's not something I can really achieve in other voxel based games. Cough. Um, but yeah, I, <laughs> the chisel, seriously, one of, one of the best things, best additions in any game I've, uh, ever, ever played. But nonetheless, anyway, we're going to be doing other things today. I'm also going to be working on the roof and make no mistake that roo the roof is about, uh, 
by the end of the session, 70% complete, uh, I'd say. And I've got a couple of ideas of how I want to um, flesh it out a bit more, but pretty much the 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 you know meat and potatoes of my design are coming together and are becoming real. And uh, and you, you you'll be able to see kind of what I envisioned when I was talking about what I you know my design in the beginning of building my roof. But uh, you'll see. Also, I uh, in this smithing area, I wanted to kind of redesign. Not just the table area, but also since um, since the bloomery is not a permanent uh, fixture like I th originally thought it was, since I was basically going to use use that um, kind of air filtration like chimney section there for the forge, I decided to give it also a bit of a, a rooted look, uh, a reality look, uh, and kind of end up making it look. Um, like a uh, an, kind of an overhead like air filter. It's not not really a filter. It's um, what you call a range, I think. Um, that you know, in real life, it would be able to suck out the suck the smoke up, but in this case, it's just going to catch the smoke so that it doesn't like settle on the rest of my uh, forage area. I do end up kind of um, opening that area up a little bit more because I also need to smelt metals and it made sense to also smelt metals underneath that range. So yeah, I, I think this all ends up looking pretty good and functional. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm grateful to have built that chimney um, for, you know, to, to make this area make a bit more sense. It's also kind of nice to have an area that doesn't feel just super square. It has a bit of an indentation or uh, extentation what would you call that concave it's it's you know it's like the, the wall is not completely flat and that's kind of the goal I don't really want to have a lot of flat edges I want to have a bit of give and flexibility to all of my design because therein lies uh, you know a bit more of a creative flair and it doesn't you know feel so boring but here is your uh, daily um, <laughs> Uh, additions to the roof as well as uh, likely a, a daily jumping off the roof although I can't remember where it is so you know uh, enjoy the surprise whenever when I jump off the roof there's at least one per session every day and uh, you never really know when it's gonna come around but I assure you it is in there also we got trashed because uh, I, I I've been kind of running through my reserves. Oh yeah, I forgot. Since I redesigned the smithy, there was less light upstairs, and for some reason, these drifters decided to get spawn inside my house. So that wasn't that wasn't a very nice surprise. Um, but yeah, the the you know I turned some of my wine, quite a lot of my wine, or sorry, a juice into wine, because it was going to spoil, and you may as well turn it into wine because it keeps longer. And I've been running like through going through my supplies. The last uh, couple weeks and not doing really much to renew them so we, I ended up drinking some of the wine and you can see there's kind of a drunk effect in game which is fun uh, that swaying effect um, not just the rippling one that when I go to bed but the swaying effect is completely in engine and is a uh, basically uh, you know like your character is is trashed on on homemade moonshine wine or whatever you want to call it I can't remember what moonshine is made from I know it's not juice Something else, I don't know, potatoes. Someone will tell me, I'm sure they will. Um, so I found this cave and, oh yeah, this is the Sphalerite cave, right? So decided to include, um, it's not really well laid out here, but um, kind of my process for looking through it and searching for ores and stuff. I do try and, uh, you know, I have basically enough quartz to last me forever. I don't think I'll ever need any more quartz. But it's worth looking through the courts because there tends to be some silver and gold in there. And uh, someone was telling me that gold is very good for making a light source, like a lantern. I don't know if that's true. Um, I'll look into that. But I, I seem to recall looking at light sources and it was pretty much like, yeah, the lantern is like the top end. Uh, and that's it. I don't think there's much difference between the metals, but uh, I'm fully willing to believe that I am wrong about that. The reason I resist it at all is because it doesn't seem very realistic. Uh, and this game is all about its realism. But, uh, you know, I know there are the occasional 
um, you know, gimme that occurs, okay, you know, in this game, because uh, along with it being rooted in reality, it is also uh, fantasy based. So there is a there's the occasional line that gets blurred. Um, so I'm willing to believe that maybe gold lanterns do better. It would be, I guess it would be nice because gold is a bit harder to find. Although I did have an easier time finding gold than I did uh, tin. But anyway, here's, you know, after having gotten the zinc from that mine, here's the, the little mini game I played trying to balance my only 80 nuggets of copper with the uh, zinc and bismuth. Because I want to, you know, make it, make use of it, make some bismuth-based uh, bronze. And it took me, this is this is a montage here, it took me a good, like, 10 to 15 minutes of playing with those, uh, you know, numbers until I found one that finally gave me 800 units of bronze. 800 being the, the ideal number we want since I have eight um, ingot molds. And I think I probably ended up wasting, or not wasting, but using up more zinc and bismuth than I needed to. My major bo bottleneck now is copper. I actually, like, really need to do a copper run at some point. I never thought I would run out of copper. But I did. So um, that's something I'm going to have to do. Maybe, probably, in the next episode. Um, but yeah, no, copper com supply is completely gone. Um, and along with uh, copper, I actually ran out of clay this session. Another thing that I, th I never thought I would run out of. It's just like, it's one of those things that just kind of lasts forever. But it's it worth mentioning that the fire clay bricks that you m use for making bloomeries are really expensive. They cost four clay each. And generally every time I make something with the clay, um, Wait a minute. Yeah, there it is. Jumped off the roof right there. There's your there's your surprise jump off the roof. Every time I make something with clay, it tends to only use like maybe one or two clay per thing. So for a brick to be to cost four clay, and then you also need twelve bricks to make one bloomery, that's it's pretty expensive. Um, so you know, I, I made enough bricks for two or three bloomeries. And that was that kind of soaked my my supplies a little bit. But uh, thankfully, there's still a ton of clay in that little uh, reservoir there. I don't know what you want to call it. It's just a clay pit. That's what we're calling it, the clay pit. And look at that. We got our windmill. The windmill is up. And I, I wanted to kind of plan things in advance and make sure that, you know, it lines up with the gear and uh, everything kind of works. Um, so I, I, you know, decided to put the windmill up and also I felt like it was a nice little achievement of like, hey, the roof is finally getting there and we actually technically have wind power now. We just don't have uh, any of the, you know, parts necessary to make use of that power. But nonetheless, the windmill is up there and it's spinning and it's, you know, happy and making use of it. We get to 60 to 80 percent wind power, which isn't a lot, but bear in mind, we're only uh, making use of like the, the lowest tier blades. Like you know, we we only, we have one set of blades up there. Uh, once I add some more, then it'll, it'll I think it'll spin a little bit faster. Make more use of that. But uh, hey, here was a major discovery. I decided to go and get some grass and sticks and stuff, and uh, I found some more claystone boulders, which are really great if you need claystone. They're a great um, way to to kind of like supply yourself with with claystone but hey borax that was a major find this was a major major find and i was so happy um to find this you never you did never think that you'd be excited for something like borax but i was uh, and this this is a really healthy supply of borax which should um i actually you can see my pickaxe broke so i had i had to leave it without get, grabbing all of it but i had enough for a couple of full barrels of borax, um, which means that we can start curing leather. And I've already, um, basically, as soon as I get back, I, I grind that borax as soon as I can and uh, throw it in a barrel and throw some leather in there. So we have a bunch of leather. Let's see how, how much here. If I did, I did, I don't know if I caught. Oh, yeah, I, <laughs> I decided to include. Yeah, here's our quench for the whoops. I always forget. I always press the wrong button and put our barrel when I mean to throw some water down. But I, I have a new location for our, our quench. There is the barrel again. And uh, here's the, 
<laughs> There's the, you're gonna fill up the, the barrel and the borax is in there. Is it in there? No, it's not in there. But once, it, when it's, once it's in there, then we can throw some pelts in. I think I put in, yeah, five large pelts, which should be enough for quite a lot of leather scraps, but it's gonna take a few days for that to, to process. Um, I do wanna have a legitimate tanning area, similar to, like, similar in quality and design to the blacksmithing area. But that won't be for a while. And, uh, you know, honestly, right now, I'm just happy that I have the ability to tan leather. Um, so that's, that's a, you know, a, kind of a big deal. Um, wanted to fire, basically, the plan here for this, the end of the session here was to make enough shingles that I would never have to make shingles again. And this isn't just for the roof. This is for basically anything I ever want shingles for again because I don't really need that many shingles like I'm gonna have some um, shingles probably for the, uh, the the greenhouses and there's a I have a couple of ideas for some outdoor smithy areas for for some bloomeries and stuff like that but the plan is um, you know I don't need too many shingles uh, it's mo mostly I'll make use of other things and they won't need to have that much under, you know, like roof enclosures. But this is, you know, this is a cram packed uh, room now full of kit piln, uh, sorry, kit pilns, pit kilns. Um, and that, uh, you know, that should do me. That's, I'm not even halfway through the sh our shingles there. But yeah, that's, that's, should do me for quite a long time anyway. That'll do it. Uh, if you want to hit that like button, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching this series. And supporting me and uh maybe you want to leave a comment i'll see you guys next time take it easy